Toy Town play by S. G. Hume Beeman. The Toy Town Treasure. <laughs> Halfway down Ark Street, and not far from the Theatre Royal, stands the house of Mr. Grouser. It is a two-storied building, rather dark and dirty looking. The woodwork is badly needing a coat of paint, and the windows are grimy and cracked. Although Mr. Grouser is said to be very rich, he is also extremely mean, and dislikes spending money on such uninteresting things as paint and glass. One afternoon there came a timid knock at the front door, and when, after a good deal of grumbling, Mr. Grouser opened it, there upon the step stood the small figure of Larry the Lamb. He looked very neat and trim. His hoofs were brightly polished, and the wool on top of his head had been parted in the middle. The wooden tray hung from his shoulders by a strap, and between his front hoofs he held a tin with a slot cut in the top. As soon as the door opened, Larry rattled the contents of the tin vigorously. Oh, oh, if you please, sir, m m Mr. Grouse, sir. This is disgraceful! Banging on my door just when I was about to take my afternoon nap, and then rattling a tin at me. Oh, but, sir, if you please, sir... Uh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Go away, go away. But, sir, I, I haven't finished. Finished? I should hope not indeed. You ought never to have begun. Rattling a tin like that, it ought not to be allowed. Oh, sir, will you please buy a flag? A flag? Did I hear you say a flag? I never heard such impudence. Do I look the sort of person who would run about waving flags? No, sir, you don't. But, but you need not wave it. You must stick it in your buttonhole. They're only a penny each. Ah, indeed. And why should I give you a penny for a piece of paper with a pin stuck through it? If you please, sir, it's, it's for a very noble cause. Awfully noble. It's for the home for destitute lambs. Oh, and where may that be? In Mr. Giles's barn until we can find a more comfortable place. And every penny you give helps to keep a destitute lamb. But I am not aware there were any destitute lambs about here. In fact, you are the only lamb I have ever seen in Toyota. How many are there in your home, eh? Answer me that animal. Oh, well, only one, sir, at present. But I'm sure there must be a lot about if I could only find them. Ah, ah it's a trick. I thought so. Disgraceful. You come here asking for a penny, and all the time it's a trick to enrich yourself. <laughs> you ought to be ashamed. Well, uh, well, will you buy a flag, sir? Get off my step! <laughs> Take yourself off! I wonder you can look me in the face, let alone rattle a tin in front of it. <laughs> be off or I'll send for the policeman. Here, here, here. What's all this? Larry turned to find Ernest the policeman standing just behind him and he jumped so violently that he upset all his flag on Mr. Grouse's doorstep. Oh, it's disgraceful, rattling a tin and upsetting all these paper flags on my doorstep. Oh, please, sir, I, I am sorry. My little hoops are so awkward for picking up things. Perhaps you and Mr. Ernest will pick them up for me. Ernest, the policeman, pulled off his white gloves to help. But suddenly Mr. Grouser looked very hard at the flag, then he looked very hard at Larry, and then at Ernest the policeman. Uh, uh, how much are you asking for these flags, Larry, my dear? A penny each, did you say? Oh, I will give you sixpence for the whole lot. Here, yeah. what's all this? It ain't like you, Mr. Grouser, sir, to be offering sixpence for some bits of paper. Uh, it's for a very noble cause. Where did you get this here paper, Larry, my lad? Please, I found it in the magician's dustbin, and I cut it up with Mr. Giles's scissors and then stuck pins through the pieces. And did you read what was on the back of the paper afore you cut it up, my lad? Oh, oh no, sir. I didn't trouble. Uh, I'll give you ninepence for the lot. No, you won't, Mr. Grouser, sir. Nor yet tenpence, nor a shilling, neither. Huh? 
This here paper, what's been cut up so careless-like, looks to me like a very important document. Something about buried treasure. I can see quite plain on one bit where the treasure is hid. And there's a lot of figures and letters what left to be put together and read careful. It's my duty to take charge of this document. <laughs> Larry, me lad, you will come with me to the town hall along of these bits of paper you've been and cut up so careless. Uh, Eighteen pence! No, Mr. Grouse, sir. I get one and five pence. I hope I knows me duty. This document goes to the town hall. If there's any treasure buried in Toy Town, it is the property of the town. Have you got any of those flags in your hand? Uh, give them here, Mr. Grouse, sir. I don't want no jiggery-pokery with you. Ernest carefully collected every piece of paper and then took Larry by the hoof. Come along, me lad. We'll go and see the mayor. Half a crown! Oh, Mr. Ernest, sir, half a crown is a lot of money. I could buy an awful lot of lollipops with half a crown. Don't you worry, me lad. If this document is what I think it is, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if you get a very handsome reward. Oh, more than half a crown. Much more. If this leads to the recovery of buried treasure, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if you get uh, five shillings at least. Oh! <laughs> When Ernest arrived with Larry at the town hall and told his story, the mayor listened with great interest and even put aside the game of noughts and crosses upon which he had been engaged in order that the pieces of paper might be spread out upon his table. It seems to me a very important matter and evidently a most valuable paper this lamb has cut up. He ought to be more careful. M Mr. Mayor, sir, I, I didn't know any better. I, I'm only a lamb, you see, and when I saw that Dirty old paper in the magician's dustbin. I thought it would make splendid flags. And it was for a very noble cause. He was a selling flags for home for destitute lambs, your worship. Charming. It sounds to me like a swindle, seeing as how he's the only lamb in the town. If I hadn't been sharp, he might have sold the flags before I found out how important the paper was. But is this lamb destitute, officer? I shouldn't be a bit surprised, your worship. I thought he looked a bit funny when I saw him yesterday. You don't seem to understand the meaning of the word destitute, officer. It means without money. Oh. <laughs> Have you no money, my lamb? Uh, oh, no, sir. I spent the last of my pocket money yesterday. These are only stones in my tin to make it rattle. And I, and I read the word destitute in a book and thought what a nice... Long word, it sounded. If you pardon me saying so, your worship, we ought to be looking into this matter of the treasure. Now, let's spread out these bits of paper and see if we can make them fit. Uh, by all means, officer, by all means. Ernest and the mayor fumbled with the pieces of paper for some time, while Larry stood on the tips of his hoofs and watched. It did not take very long to arrange the pieces, because Larry had been unable to use the scissors very well, and the edges were so uneven that it was fairly easy to see where the joins should come. And at last all the pieces had been fitted together, and the mayor was able to read the entire paper. You were perfectly right, officer. It is about the buried treasure. This is very important, very important indeed. Listen, I will read it to you. Your worship. How to find the buried treasure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Everybody can see it. A lot of people would rather not. Eight, nine, ten. When you come to it, take six steps to the right, or left, as the case may be, and mind the step. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Go as far as you can if he isn't there, and dig in the middle, or blow up if preferred. It's in a black box if somebody has not been there first. Signed, Joe Banks, gentleman. Joe Banks, gentleman. Is that all, sir? Because if so, all I can say is it don't make sense. Not know how it don't. Well, of course it don't. <coughs> it doesn't make sense, officer. Who ever heard of a guide to buried treasure making sense? If it did, anyone could understand it. 
It's supposed to be mysterious, a sort of riddle or puzzle. And then what's the good of writing it down at all? That's what I want to know. Silly, I calls it. The only thing I understand about it is the name. I remember Joe Banks, gentleman. Gentleman on the road, he was. Highwayman in plain language. Many's the time I've arrested him. Last time he escaped, and I haven't seen him since. Then you can depend upon it, officer, that this treasure consists of the watches and other articles stolen by this highwayman. We must solve the puzzle. Pull yourself together now. Pull yourself together. Use your wits. Aye? What, for example, uh, do you make of the numbers? Oh, Peter, I know that they're, they're put in to make it more difficult. I, uh, very shrewd remark, my lamb. I, I think you're probably right. Now, officer, let us ignore the numbers and consider carefully the rest of the message. Now, everybody can see it. What do you make of that? I don't make nothing of it at all, your worship. Not know how I don't. Nonsense, it sounds to me. Remember, officer, the next sentence. A lot of people would rather not see it. What can it be? Well, your worship, the only thing I can think of what everybody can see and a lot of people don't want to see... Yes? ...is your statue in the middle of the square. I, 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 I beg your pardon, officer. Well, so it is, your worship. I says what I means, I does. Only yesterday I heard a person say out loud in front of your statue as how it looked like something a cat had been gnawing. Oh, I... Oh, I, I took his name and address prompt. I hope I knows me duty. Uh, you were quite right, officer, quite right. I, I hope it'll prove a warning to others. <laughs> but to, uh, to return to this matter of the buried treasure, uh, as I am so clever at crossword puzzles, to say nothing of noughts and crosses, I have no doubt I shall soon be able to solve the mystery. <sighs> But I must be left alone. I cannot solve a puzzle of this kind while you, officer, are breathing heavily at my elbow and this lamb is scraping his hooves against my chair. Go away, both of you. Go away. So Larry and Ernest left the mare and Larry scampered out into the square. To his surprise, there stood Mr. Grouser leaning on his stick, looking rather more disagreeable than usual and staring hard at the statue of the mare which stood before the town hall. As soon as he caught sight of Larry, he beckoned and then led the way into a side street. Well, well, Lamb, have you considered my offer? Oh, Mr. Grouse, sir, I should love to send you all my flags for five shillings. Half a crown, animal, half a crown. <laughs> Do you suppose I would give you five shillings? I never heard of such a thing. You ought to be ashamed to suggest it. Oh, I mean half a crown, sir. I would take... Half a crown for the flags, but I haven't got them any longer. The mayor has them, and he's stuck them all together, and we've read the writing on the back. It's about a buried treasure, and now Mr. Mayor is working out the puzzle. Oh, and it's a pity he isn't something better to do. And uh, did you read the writing? Oh, oh, yes, I read it several times. And I don't suppose you can remember it. <laughs> Lambs never could remember anything. Well, then, I said I would give you half a crown for the pieces of paper. And so that you shall not feel disappointed, I will give you a shilling. One shilling, if you can remember the writing. Oh, oh yes, Mr. Grouse, sir. I can remember it quite well. <laughs> uh, where is the shilling? Oh, but you must repeat the thing to me, else how am I to know you do remember it? So Larry recited the contents of the document in a little bleating voice, leaving out the numbers, however, while Mr. Grouser listened attentively. Then Mr. Grouser asked Larry to say it all over again, after which he gave Larry the promised shilling and hobbled away as fast as he could. The inventor stood at a bench in his workshop, beating a sheet of tin with a heavy hammer. It is not surprising, therefore, that he did not hear the sound of footsteps as Mr. Grouser cautiously entered the room. Not to be 
you alone. Uh, uh, it's you, Mr. Grouse, I was at And uh, what can I do for you? Uh, you haven't come to see my new beetle killer by any chance? Certainly not. I have no wish to see a beetle killer. Uh, but it's a very novel kind of beetle killer. And extremely simple. Hmm? It works with treacle. I don't like treacle and I don't like beetles either. I don't like anything. I don't like the noise you are always making and I shouldn't be here now if I hadn't a little piece of work for you. Uh, perhaps you are not worried by beetles. Hmm? I am worried by everything and everybody. I don't suppose there was ever a man who was as worried and annoyed by everything as I am. Now... Now, come, sir. Forget your beetle trap and pay attention. Uh, what is it? I understand you invent things. Uh, yes, I've invented mm. quite a lot of things. Uh, quite a lot. Uh, uh, for example... Yes, 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 yes. And I suppose you are good at puzzling things out? Uh, yes, yes, quite good. Hmm? Uh, I've had to puzzle out a lot of things. Uh, for example... Uh, uh, are you capable of solving riddles? Uh, uh, riddle? Uh, oh, really, Mr. Grosser... I hope you haven't interrupted my work to ask me riddles. Oh, right? talk sense, sir. When I say riddles, I, I mean a puzzle, a mysterious message. I have here a sheet of paper on which I have written down a curious message exactly as it was repeated to me. I wish you to solve it. I expect to pay a fee, of course. Expense is no object. Ah, that is, that is within reason. I do not wish to go... Beyond two and sixpence. Yes, yes, yes. Well, that this concerns a buried treasure. Hmm? Uh, you can hardly expect me to puzzle this out for a mere half crown. Um, I will solve it for you with pleasure, uh, but uh, I must insist upon a half share of the treasure. How much? Uh, you see, uh, you can't read it without my help, and uh, also it looks as if you will have to blow something up. Oh. Hmm? Uh, now, uh, I'm rather good at blowing up things, uh, none better. Though I say it myself, hmm? uh, In fact, uh, I've just invented a new sort of gunpowder which will be excellent for this purpose. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Uh, half share, indeed. It's taking a mean advantage, that's what it is. I, 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 I should be ashamed to take advantage like that. However, I suppose I shall have to agree because, as you say, your gunpowder will be necessary. Now, sir... Get to work, get to work, solve the puzzle. Yeah, for a half share. Oh, then. yes, you grasping fellow. Though I say again that you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, very good. And now let me see. Hmm, uh, everybody can see it. A lot of people would rather not. Uh, what would that be? Hmm? The stagecoach. Uh, why the stagecoach? Hmm? Because it is a disgrace to Toy Town. It ought not to be allowed of all the slow, badly managed conveyances. Uh, no, the stagecoach is not the object of our tour. Uh, remember that this message was written by a highwayman. Hmm? Now, uh, what is it a highwayman would rather not see? Don't hmm? ask me, sir. Don't ask me if, if I am to give you half the share for solving the puzzle. Solve it. Don't expect me to do it. It's the police station. Police station? Obvious, yes. I, I wonder you didn't think of it. Huh? Now, uh, when you come to it, take six steps to the right or left, as the case may be, and mind the step. Yes, uh, obviously, this refers to the way from which you approach the police station. Um, if you come from one end of the street, you would turn to the right. If from the other end, you would naturally turn to the left. Hmm? Uh, quite obvious. Uh, don't you agree? Don't hmm? ask me, sir. Don't ask me. I know nothing about police stations. I believe in prisons where people who are a nuisance to everybody can be locked yes, up. Uh, go as far as you can. If he isn't there, then who isn't there? Are you solving this riddle or am I? Uh, yes, it, it refers to the policeman. Uh, quite sensible, too. I mean, one could hardly dig for treasure in the police station with the policeman about. Of course not. <laughs> He would certainly notice it. Hmm. And now, uh, dig in the middle or blow up if preferred. Um, yes, it's in a black box if somebody has not been there first. Yes, well, uh, it all seems quite clear. Hmm? Uh, I wonder you couldn't understand it yourself. Mm -hmm. All we have to do now is to take round a barrel of my new gunpowder and blow up the police station. Uh, when the smokers are cleared away, no doubt we shall find the treasure quite easily. Hmm? I, 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 I suppose you know your own business, but it seems extraordinary to me. 
Why should a highwayman bury his treasure in the police station? Well, why not, hmm? It seems as good a place as any. After all, he must have spent a good deal of time in the police station, uh, being arrested by Ernest and all that. Mm, true, true. Uh, perfectly simple to bury the treasure under the floor when Ernest was out on his beat. Uh, you may depend upon it, the treasure is there, Mr. Grasshopper. Uh, we will go round after dark with a nice big barrel of gunpowder. Hmm? Oh, uh, I, um, I suppose your gunpowder won't blow up the town by any chance? Is it very strong? Uh, I don't know. I... I haven't tried it yet. That evening, when most of the citizens of Toy Town were at supper, the mayor and Ernest the policeman might have been seen in the square near the mayor's statue. The mayor held the paper relating to the treasure, while Ernest had a spade and a yard measure. The mayor was taking long strides, first in one direction and then in another, and after every six steps he would close his eyes and count to himself. One, two, three, four. Five, six. Well, your worship, have you solved the mystery? I, I feel sure I have, officer. It's really simple, though I still have a little calculating to do. Are you any good at multiplication, officer? Very fair, sir. My nose up to twelve times, if that's any help. Because I have decided, officer, that the lamb was wrong in supposing the figures in the documents were put in to deceive. It seems quite clear to me now that the figures contain the clue to the mystery. But a good deal of arithmetic is required. Well, Your Worship, arithmetic's all very well in its place. But what I want to know is, where's the treasure? Do you know or don't you? Because I've been messing about all day over this bit of paper and i got some work to do at the police station. Oh, don't be so impatient, officer. Don't be so impatient. I know roughly where the treasure is. It only wants a little thought. Now, where would a highwayman dig if he wanted to bury something? In the ground, I should think, sir. Exactly, officer, just what I supposed. But one can't dig through cobblestones, can one? I can't, your worship. At least I ain't going to try. I've got to make out a description of a last dog to stick on my notice board. Oh, then go and do it, officer. I am quite capable of finding the treasure without your assistance. Go away. But uh, leave the spade here and also the yard measure. All right, Your Worship, I will. And I hopes you find the treasure. I hope so. I won't say no more. Taint for me to say what I think. I knows me duty. If you want me, you'll find me in the police station in the back office. Ernest went away, and for some time the mayor worked on in silence, consulting the paper at intervals, counting on his fingers and occasionally taking long strides which he afterwards measured carefully. Suddenly there came an interruption in the shape of Larry the Lamb. Oh, sir, oh, oh, Mr. Mayor, sir, if you... What please, is it, please. Lamb, what is it? Can't you see I'm busy? But, but, but please, Mr. Mayor, sir, is it, is... Take your time, my lamb, take your time. Don't get flustered. Oh, Mr. Mayor, sir, I've just seen a dreadful thing. I've just seen Mr. Grouser and Mr. Inventor, and Mr. Grouser was carrying a huge barrel. A barrel? What was the dreadful in that? Gunpowder was in it, sir. It said on the barrel, gunpowder with care. Gunpowder? Hey, gunpowder! Yes, sir. And they put the barrel on the steps of the police station, and the inventor asked me if I had a match, but I hadn't, and Mr. Grouser hadn't either, so the inventor went away to find some. Good gracious, this is terrible. They're going to blow up the police station, and the constable is inside. Oh, you did quite right to tell me, my lamb, quite right. Yeah. This is Mr. Grouse's revenge, because the constable wouldn't let him have the document. Come, we must hurry to the police station. How fortunate the constable left the spade here. Shouldering the spade, the mayor set off at a brisk trot towards the police station, followed by Larry. Just as they came in sight of the building, there was a loud bang, a clatter of breaking glass, and the street became filled with smoke. Two heads were peering round the corner, 
and the mayor was able to recognize Mr. Glasser and the inventor, that when they caught sight of him, they turned and ran. The smoke cleared away, and from the front window of the police station, from which all the glass had disappeared, protruded the head of Ernest the policeman. You, you, who done that? Are you quite safe, officer? Safe? I'm safe if you call having your helmet blowed off being safe. Who's been a letting off fireworks on my doorstep? Well, I fear it was Mr. Grouser, officer, assisted by the inventor. I saw them both distinctly. Evidently, Mr. Grouser was greatly offended because you wouldn't allow him to purchase the treasure document. I'll learn him. Where's my notebook? Oh, blowing up people like that. Most disrespectful to the law, I calls it. Oh, Mr. Ernest, uh, I think they were very likely blowing it up to get the treasure. I, I remember now... Mr. Grouser gave me a shilling if I could remember what was on the paper. Perhaps he remembered too. And I'll learn him, taking advantage of a young lamb like that. At that moment, the mayor perceived the magician. He had come up quietly while they had been talking. Are you referring to that old paper about a treasure by any chance? Oh, oh, yes, Mr. Magician, sir, the paper I found in your dustbin. Then if you'd be making all this smoke and banging to find the treasure, you might have saved yourself the trouble. That paper was in my dustbin because I'd finished with it. I dug up the treasure weeks ago. You dug it up? Where was it? At the crossroads, Mr. Mayor. You see, I saw that rascal Banks burying of it when I was out there one night doing a spell. And I thought, as a good citizen, I ought to dig it up again. He dropped the paper when he buried the treasure because I made a, a mooing sound from behind the edge. I think he thought it was the constable here. Hey. <laughs> and uh, may I ask how much the treasure was, Mr. Magician? Four and sixpence in a large ball of silver paper. Hardly worth the digging for. <laughs> Good night to you, Mr. Mayor. Good night, officer. <sighs> well, let this be a lesson to you, officer. You make too much of things. Oh. Yes, you might just as well have allowed this lamb to sell his flags in peace instead of causing all the commotion. Treasure, indeed. <laughs> I blame myself, too. I might have known that no treasure buried by a highwayman would be worth having. And now we're no better off for all our trouble. In fact, you're worse off for all your windows are broken. Mr. Grouser will pay for those, sir. You leave that to me. I'm a-going round to Mr. Grouser's now. And I suppose you, my lamb, will be going off to spend the shilling Mr. Grouser gave you. Oh, sir, I spent that already on lollipops. You can get an awful lot of lollipops for a shilling. Do you feel all right, my lamb? Well, I, I do feel I should like to lie down. I feel a little funny inside. I'm going home. To my manger. That was The Toy Town Treasure, a Toy Town play by S.G. Hume Beeman. Larry the Lamb was played by Derek McCulloch, who was also the narrator. Mr. Grouser by John Glyn Jones. The Mayor of Toy Town by Felix Felton. Ernest the Policeman by Peter Clawton. The Inventor by Ivan Sampson. And The Magician was played by Norman Shelley. The play which was recorded was produced by Claire Choville. <laughs> Listen again at the same time next week to another Toy Town play, Larry the Plumber. <laughs>